on this episode of It's Me or the Dog, Victoria enters a household divided. TV says no men allowed. The Shelton family is split down the middle. The boys have their dogs, and the girls have theirs. It really is male versus female. Junie B, their four-year-old toy poodle, hates men. She growls, barks, and bites. Son Spencer and Dad Joe have had enough. That is my spot. I wanted to get rid of Junie B from the get-go. I wouldn't mind smacking her. Yet the women in the household cherish Junie B. I love Junie B. I have never seen a dog do that before. And the whole family has forgotten about Apple and Zuzu. Come on, stop. Who are left on their own out in the yard. Okay. Can Victoria rescue the Sheltons? If you put me on my back and try to hold me down, <laughs> I'd bite you. <laughs> and bring men and women together again. I'm shocked that you've let this behavior go on for so long. Victoria Stillwell has over 13 years' experience training dogs in Great Britain and the USA. Now she's headed to the Shelton's home to help tackle Junie B. Expecting a scared dog to behave like a stable dog isn't realistic or fair. Getting angry at a fearful dog will not help to improve its behavior. In fact, it'll exacerbate the problem. Before she starts training, Victoria will first spend a day observing the family and their dogs. All right. Hello. Hello, Victoria. Hi. Come in. I'm Joe. Hi. Good to see nice you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Yes. This is Junie B. I can hear the growling. I walked into the house and there was this tiny little poodle in Andrea's arms growling at me. And I could see very quickly this was a very scared little dog. Is she shaking? Uh-huh. Oh, bless her heart. <laughs> you don't have to bless her heart. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, really? <laughs> you don't have to. Oh, you like it that much, then, do you? Well, sometimes. She's not terribly fond. No. OK. No. All right. All right, well, let's get through with her. Come on back. Come on back. Yeah, we got her from a foster home. She liked the mother and the daughter in the foster home, not the husband. So we had a little bit of forewarning, but we thought, we can handle it. Tell me, tell me, tell me then the problems you were having with her. Well, clearly in this house, there's a divide between the males and the females. She didn't like my son from, from minute one. <laughs> Junie B's biggest problem, however, is with Joe. If I'm coming home from work, she barks at me like I'm intruding on her territory. <laughs> Over time, I mean, we're three years into this thing, and my son and I have tried, tried, tried. You know, at some point, you just sort of give up. Joe told me that he can't handle Junie B. She growls at him, or she runs away from him, or she bites him. <laughs> Joe seems to be taking this very personally. In the early days when we had her, I would try to grab her and hold her in place. Well, I got bit. When you tried to stop her, did you lie her on her side? I think I tried to lie her on her back. And then she bit you? Sure. <laughs> If you put me on my back and try to hold me down, <laughs> I'd bite you. <laughs> Joe tells me that he has had dogs for years and has never had any problems. And now here comes this dog that doesn't want to have anything to do with him. I think, you know, the ego's been hurt a little bit. Typically, if I walked into this scenario, I'm just coming in from any other room, yep, 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 oh. right away when okay. I enter the room. Why don't we try that? For sure. Okay. With Joe outside, Victoria finds out more about the division. So she likes the girls, but she doesn't like the boys mm -hmm. in the household. We've become this uh, two-part household. This okay. is the girls' dog, and those are the boys' dogs, and never the two shall meet. OK. So. <laughs> All right. For the last three years, Joe has been on the sharp end of Junie B's dislike of men. This is how he's greeted. Oh, there's a little bark. Junie B was very uncomfortable. She was trying to back away. She was practicing avoidance. She wanted to get the hell out of there. The opposite end of that spectrum. Well, I'd like to see the other dogs, so can we go Absolutely. outside and see out, them? Out, out here. All right. To compensate for Junie B's hey. rejection of men, Hello. last year the family bought two terrier mixes. This is Apple, and this is Zuzu. What are their food bowls doing outside here? Do they live out here? They do. They live out here. They come inside it every night. OK. But but they're jumpy. Destructive. Destructive. Mm -hmm. And they're going to dig. They they're dig. diggers. 
During their days left alone in the backyard, the terriers have chewed up the patio railing, rocking chairs, and dug countless holes in the ground. Apple and Zuzu, they're in the yard for 14 hours a day. So after a while, it becomes boring. And does Spencer, does he, does he play with them? Does he? Not enough. He's yeah. not going to like that answer, but he's not enough. Not enough, no. And we have not uh, licked the voice command thing. Oh, what, so they don't listen to you? Oh, gosh, no. If we go outside the gate and they're not on a leash, anything could happen. Apple and Zuzu, they've had no training whatsoever. They don't know any language because they haven't been taught. So, of course, they're not going to respond to Joe and Andrea. They don't know what Joe and Andrea want of them. None of the family's three dogs get regular walks. And when they do, it's impossible for Joe to leash Junie B. I'm just going to go for a walk. So when I unleash her, no problem. OK. OK, you want to go for a walk? Come on. Let's go for a walk. Yeah. So she walks fine with you, but doesn't walk Great fine Great walker. With Notice her. she's staying on that side, yeah. primarily because of me, I think. Yeah. And then you want to pass off? Yeah, OK. Good luck. You take her. All right. Come on, Junie. She's right there. Come on. Come on, Junie. Let's go. Come on. Come on. When Junie B realized that Andrew had passed the leash to Joe, she stopped. She didn't want to walk any further. Okay, can you switch off then? Okay. Come here, girl. So she didn't. Come know. here. Well, here, come on, on, this way. Okay. Hey, Junie, look. All right, we're good again. So, what, what would happen if I just took the leash? With Junie? Yeah. I don't know. I wanted to see if I could walk Junie B. If really Junie B's problems lies in the fact that she does not like males and she's more relaxed and comfortable with females. I'm thinking it wouldn't work. Uh-oh, <laughs> it didn't work. You're the bad guy, Joe. You're the bad guy. The girl. She did walk with me. And that gives me an indication that it really is more male versus female. She <laughs> likes me better than she likes you. <laughs> There's no question about Victoria's that. Victoria's moving in. Junie B is one very stressed out, very anxious, nervous little dog. I think that she has had something in her past that has made her scared towards males especially. And she is demonstrating her fear and her discomfort very, very clearly. Once the kids get home, Victoria learns about Spencer's frustrations with Junie B. My mom and my sister get this love, and we get the aggression from her, and I don't think it's fair at all. Abby, what do you think is going on in Junie B's head? I think some of the fault is Spencer's, because he's always shooting rubber bands at her. Tell me, tell me about these elastic bands. Uh, yeah, I have these, um, rubber band guns. They just shoot little elastic bands. They don't hurt much. But I never shoot her, I just joke you around. You shot her yesterday. No, I didn't. Yeah, but... I feel sorry for Spencer, because this was supposed to be his dog. But it's a dog that will just not allow him near her. Hey, I understand you're frustrated. Totally get it. I would be too if I was in a house with a dog that growled at me for three years. Try to bite me, but you're not going to make things better. Junie, you ready to get a bed? One of the biggest problems over the last three years has been Junie B's reaction to Joe in the bedroom. She's very at ease. Yeah. Oh, she says, I like that. Yeah. All right, Joe, come up. And we're going to see a sudden shift in mood. <laughs> Junie, what's the problem? My bad, Junie. The bedroom was fascinating. What I don't understand is why Andrea and Joe have waited for three years to get a trainer in. Guilty as charged, both of us. 
I wish we had addressed it sooner and we could have spared ourselves a lot of a lot of issues. There's been so little effort to understand why Junie B is behaving in the way she is. You're never going to get anywhere until you understand why the behavior is occurring. Dog trainer Victoria Stillwell has observed the problems in the Shelton family's divided household. All right. Come on, Junie. She's right there. Come on. Now it's time for her to tell parents, Andrea and Joe, where they've gone wrong. I'm shocked that you've let this behavior go on for so long and that this huge divide has occurred, boys versus girls. I think it's frustrating for Spencer to see Junie B be fine with Abby and not for him. <laughs> Spencer wanted a dog and You've got her from a rescue situation. But her foster has told you that there was a problem. And the problem was she didn't get on well with the males of the house. That there should have been a red flag. Yes, it should have been. Yes, it should have been. You should have not walked but run from that. I mean, do we need to get rid of Junie B? Well, and is the... Well, hold on. Now, as much as I'm intrigued at that prospect, it's like moving a dirt pile. I mean, you're not going to give somebody else a problem. Now, she's a damaged dog. She's had six years of this behavior. Six years deeply ingrained stress, anxiety, aggression. But she is the most beautiful signaler I've seen. She is talking to you and talking to you in her body language and with her growls. She is wearing her emotion on her paw. Her heart's out there for everyone to see, and that's a good thing. Because Spencer wasn't getting on with Junie B, you felt bad, and then you went and got Apple and Zuzu as a sort of consolation prize for Spencer. Yet, these two dogs now just spend their life living in your backyard, and you really haven't done anything with them. So no wonder they're not gonna listen to you. What do you expect? We have a lot of work ahead of us, so are you ready to do this training process? Because it's gonna be a long one. You ready? <laughs> no, I'm ready. I'm still anxious and nervous. The goal here is to get this thing fixed, and if we do, and I'm part of the problem, I'm I'm happy to accept that. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Let's do it then. Okay. Right. Victoria starts off the training with a lesson on personal space. Everybody has, I call it a space bubble around them. And you let people that you know and you love into that bubble. Dogs also have a space bubble around them. But we humans are always invading their space without being invited. And that causes so many problems, especially for a nervous dog. That's your space bubble. That's your space bubble too. Let's say you don't know me, okay? Now I want you to react like Junie B reacts when I get too close for comfort. Whoa. I'm stepping back from that. What about, Spencer, if I do this? Oh, you're such a cute little boy. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah. It's strange. A, you haven't given me permission to come into your space. You certainly don't want to be touched by somebody who you don't know on your head. So that's what Junie B's going through because she is having people invade her space all the time. She is having people coming up to her and smiling. Hi. Oh, what's that? That she just sees my teeth. Also, I'm staring. When Victoria came into my bubble, it just felt strange and that I thought, no, well, why are they coming into my bubble and why are they doing this to me? I feel unsafe and I wanted to run away. How'd that feel? Uh, very intimidating. You can make it easier for her by doing other things. First, I could approach just sort of with my side body because that is smaller. Then I could approach like this, the look and the look away. Look, look away. And what you're actually doing there is you're talking dog. They avert their eyes. It's no threat. The stare is a threat. Aversion is not. 
Abby and Spencer each take a turn at using the side body approach. Fabulous. So now you can tell your friends about space, how important it is, and what they should do when they come over to your house. One frequent visitor to the house is Spencer's friend, Samuel. Victoria wants Junie B to start building some positive associations with the boys. Spencer has in the past got very frustrated with Junie B, and I think sometimes he's taken out that frustration on her. It was important to illustrate, A, just what the world is like from Junie B's point of view, but also to say, you know, this is how you can develop a relationship. Abby, can you bring Junie B in? Hi. She loves food, and that's great for us because we can use it. Victoria entices Junie B out of the safety of Abby's lap with a small piece of hot dog. Such a good girl. Then has the boys do the same. And this is just building up a positive association for Junie B that, you know what, Spencer and Samuel are the source of good things, not bad things. Now, one more thing. Do you want to just lie down on the floor on your stomachs? Oh, like okay. this. Now, when I stand up, I look pretty tall from yeah. down there, don't I? Imagine living your whole life being much smaller than everybody else, having these huge, great big feet tramping past you, and you don't speak this weird person's language because you're a different species. You don't know that I'm not going to be threatening. A little daunting, huh? Mm -hmm. A little. OK. A little. That's what Junie B goes through every day. So, Spencer, when you do get frustrated with her, try and remember what the world is like from her point of view. It was interesting to see Junie's point of view because I never thought of Junie being that small and her seeing the world around her as this, and it was an eye-opener for me. Having briefed the kids on some basic rules with Junie B, Victoria turns her attention to the family's forgotten terrier mixes. Andrea and Joe have done very little training with Apple and Zuzu. In fact, Andrea told me that she doesn't think that Apple and Zuzu even know their names. So I just want to start off doing some name recognition training. All right. Now, you tell me that you don't think Apple and Zuzu know their names. We're not sure. OK. Come here, Apple. Apple. Apple, Apple, come here, Apple. So I just want to do a simple name recognition game, and you guys can do this as well. All I'm going to do is I'm going to say her name and treat her. Zuzu. Good girl. Zuzu. Good girl. What I did is I waited for her to look away from me. I called her name. She looked at me, and I gave her a treat. Okay. Zuzu. Good girl. Zuzu. Training with Apple and Zuzu. We have to go back to basics, because they don't know anything. And I think they're going to learn pretty quickly. Zuzu. Good girl. If you don't stimulate them mentally and you don't give them lots of physical exercise, all of that energy can go on to negative behavior, such as digging and chewing. When I finished the name recognition training, it was time to go on to a simple sit training. I'm just going to hold a treat in front of Apple's mouth. And she has to work out how she's going to get this out of my hand. I want her to put her bottom on the ground. Good girl. Oh, my. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Now, what, were you pushing back at all? Just, no. uh, just raising her head a little bit. So that's how you get them to sit. I love it when I see people really enjoying their dogs. Good yeah. girl. And seeing that, you know, their dogs do have a brain and they do respond and you can communicate with them. Good girl. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. Well done. What I'm seeing is it, it's not that they weren't smart, it's just that they were not trained. I think the sky's the limit. We're, we're going to get a lot of payoff and, and a lot of enjoyment from interacting with them. I think it's really fun. Dog trainer Victoria Stillwell has been teaching the Shelton family to respect Junie B's personal space. That's your space bubble. Victoria now wants Junie B to respect the Shelton's personal space. I want to teach Junie B not to growl at you, not to bark at you anymore when you come into bed. Amen. <laughs> That's going to be something. Yeah, it's going to be something. Junie B's had three years of growling at Joe when he's come to bed, so this is going to be a very difficult habit to break. So I'm going to direct you through this. 
You and I, Joe, we're gonna go outside. Then you're gonna come through the door. As soon as you hear Junie B growl, mm -hmm. you put her on the ground and ignore her. Oh no, so she's not gonna be able to be on the bed? But it's a huge reward for her to be able to sleep next to Andrea. But when Joe comes in, she growls at him and she barks at him. Now, if she barks or growls, she's gonna be put on the floor. And that is not nice for her. Let's give it a try. <laughs> we didn't last long. Wait for five seconds. OK, Joe, you and I are going to go out again? Try it again. Oh, OK, I get it. Okay. Good. Is it good? This could take a few tries. After three growls, Victoria wants to send Junie B a stronger message. Mm -hmm. Can you give her a little bit of a vocal reprimand now? OK. As soon as you hear that growl, up, then down. OK. Mm. Uh, Victoria made the comment, I have all day. And she even said, you know, sometimes it takes 20 tries or more. And it looks like Junie B could break that record. I thought it was going to take all day. I just didn't see uh, Junie B breaking down on this one. Uh, eh. She delayed a little bit this time. It's getting there. Nope. Eh. Eh. Ten minutes in, and Junie B's growls are starting to come later. So Victoria wants to encourage these signs of good behavior. I'm going to give you a few treats now. If you get to the bed and she still hasn't growled, throw a treat onto the pillow. OK. Eh. I think she's finally realizing this is naughty behavior because her body language is changing. Right. <laughs> OK. I get the picture. It's Joe's 15th attempt to lay on the bed. Amazing. When we finally got to that point where Junie B came in, no growl, no bark, laid down. I mean, it felt good. It was more of, man, we had just achieved a goal. You think eventually she'll actually anticipate him coming to bed? Like, yay, Joe's coming to bed. Exactly. From now on, Joe has to come armed with a few treats when he comes to bed. And I don't think it's going to be long that Junie B is going to look forward to his arrival. Now that Junie B doesn't automatically growl at Joe, Victoria wants to help her to stop fearing him. I want to teach her that hands are a good thing. So I'm going to teach her the touch command. Junie B is frightened of Joe's approach. She's frightened of the hand coming towards her, and when he does extend his hands towards her, she growls, snaps, runs away. This is teaching her, you know what, pressure's taken off. You can make your own decision about going up and touching Joe's hand rather than the other way. Hi. Oh, is that tasty? Touch, good girl. And are we going to say touch? Yeah. I remove my hand behind my back just so that it's a novel thing again for her when I present it. Because if I just keep the hand out there, she doesn't know what to do. Right. Touch. Good girl. Very good. All right. So now, Joe, I'd like you to do this. If you can get down on the ground, sit cross-legged, I'm going to give you the treats. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Touch. Good girl. Good girl. Touch. Good girl. Good girl. That little brain is working hard. She now knows. Mm -hmm. This part of the training was very successful because Junie B picked up the touch command very quickly. It's teaching the dogs that the approach of a hand means something good is going to happen to it and not something fearful. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. Victoria's aim is for Joe to be able to start walking Junie B. That means he has to learn how to leash her. I think it's better for her to actually wear a harness. Yes. This is going to be much better for her delicate throat, so you're not walking her on a collar. 
you're walking her on a harness. Um, secondly, it's going to be much easier for her to have you leash her by going on her back and not around her neck. Ah. Okay? That makes sense. So, um, I'm going to give this to you okay. so that you can put that on Junie B. Joe has never successfully leashed Junie B, so going into this technique, I had my doubts. I thought this might be the one time Victoria Steelwell will not be able to train a dog. Yeah, I can't just get it quickly enough. Come here. Come here. Look, there's more there. As soon as I hate. Ah, oh, you know what? I got it. I got it. This is going to make it easier. Keep the treat in your hand. Let her kind of bite it in your hand. Mm-hmm. OK. And then do it. OK, now your turn. OK. Jeannie. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. There you go. Hey, yeah, you're leashed by good Daddy. Good girl, and you got so many extra treats. You love to see. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now that was she success. has to walk on the leash with you. I've said before that patience is not my strong suit. Right. And, and Ginny was nervous. Like, the pressure was on. Dog trainer Victoria Stillwell has helped the boys in the Shelton family to build a bond with Junie B. Now she wants to put the training to the test and see if, for the first time ever, Joe can walk the dog. Joe is not able to walk Junie B. As soon as she knows that Joe's got the leash, she puts the brakes on. So I have a few things up my sleeve that I think is going to help the situation. OK, so come up with me, Joe, here. Come here, take the leash from me. Andrea, drop the leash now, but just walk there. OK. Is it working? Yeah. Has she noticed? Not yet. <laughs> She's just sticking right to your legs. OK. But Joe's got all the leash in his hands. The fact you're there, though, is very is comforting for her. This is definite progress. Definite progress. OK, let's turn back. I'm so proud of you. OK. Come on. <laughs> I've never seen a dog do that before, where it really is like a toddler like a grabbing onto the leg, right. saying, just stay with me, Mommy, <laughs> stay with me. Come on, GDB, is a Come good on. girl. Come on. This is so much better than yesterday. I mean, how would you explain it? She now knows that Joe's got the other end of the leash. Mm -hmm. You're here still giving her confidence. I mean, what we want to do is to be able to have Joe walk her by herself, but right. we're doing baby steps to begin with. There was a, you know, kind of a eureka moment where we realized Junie realized I had the leash, uh, but yet she didn't freeze up. So we knew that that was a small success right there. How does it feel, Joe? I tell you what, it's shocking. I never saw this coming, and it just happened. Wow, you, she actually looks happy right now. Yeah. Forgotten terriers Apu and Zuzu have been taught their names and how to sit. Now Victoria wants to encourage the kids to get more involved with the dogs. I thought it would be really good to use Abby and Spencer, because it really is about making it a game, making it fun, playing, and terrier mixes love doing that. I want to train these dogs to come to you when you call them. Bubba's! Bubba's! Come! Oh, Zuzu! Zuzu is very much more motivated by animals in the ground or sounds that she hears. Meow, meow, meow. <gasps> wow! Good, a little raised note. Terriers like squeaky high sounds. It's the sound of prey. So when I really wanted to get her attention, I was going to squeak. So I'm calling their names and I'm telling them, come. Apple Zuzu, come. Good. And I'm rewarding them with treats. Abby, I want you to call them to come to you and step back as you're doing it. Apple Zuzu, come. Get Zuzu's attention. Zuzu, do a little squeak. <coughs> Apple Zuzu, come. Running away can make it a bit more exciting. They love to chase. Oh, good. Good, good pups. Spencer, can you back up? Run up behind that bush, OK? Apple, Zuzu, come. It was fun playing with the puppies because they have so much energy. It was fun to just run with them and they're to chase. In that simple game, I knew 
do all the time. Apple Zuzu, come! I'd like you to play this game with the dogs whenever you can. Try and find as many ways as you can to motivate them. I think this is going to help the dogs chew less, dig less, and if they get taken out for their daily walks, as I've advised, I think those dogs will be much happier. The stare is a threat. Aversion is not. Dog trainer Victoria Stillwell has helped bring the divided Shelton family together. Is it working? Yeah. For the next few days, the family will continue training without her. Come on, Ginny B. But before she goes, she has a new task for the boys. From now on, you and Spencer are going to be doing the feeding. I want to show Junie B, not only are you the source of treats, you're also the main source of food. With Joe and Spencer being the primary feeders, Junie B is going to look forward to their presence a lot more. They are going to be the source of all the good tasty things she gets. Should I look down or not look down? Just don't look down at her. As well as the boys feeding Junie B, Victoria has some other instructions for the family. All right. The most important thing, Spencer and Joe, is that you have to carry on developing that relationship with Junie B. I would like you to spend more time with Apple and Zuzu. You have to build up that common language with them. Good luck. Thank you. And I'll return. OK. Thank Bye. you, Victoria. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Guns, no pointy fingers. Okay. It's day one without Victoria, and Spencer and his friend Samuel are keen to keep up with the training. Touch. Good girl. Ju Junie B is on her best behavior, and so are the boys. Good girl. All right, that was good. See? Good job. As long as you invite her in and let her know that she's your friend, it's good. Good girl. The children are also keeping up with the training with Apple and Zuzu. With all the activity, there's no time for the dogs to indulge in their digging habit. Good girl. Apple, Zuzu, come. We've got to find him. Good girl. You like these treats, don't you? Yeah. Good work. Good work. With everything a breeze, Victoria checks in on the progress. Let's check on the Shelton family and see how they've been doing. Good girl. Can you get a glance here and there and see what she's doing? She's fine. She's not paying attention to us. Spencer and Joe are taking charge of Junie B's feeding. Uh-oh, I heard some skittishness. With the boys around, she's still nervous, but she's able to eat her full meal. Touch. Joe and Spencer work every technique to try and make Junie B more comfortable. Touch. Good girl. The men of the household are going from strength to strength. Girl. But Andrea is struggling with Victoria's instruction to stop being the source of treats. Let me try. You can't, Mom. You can't give her the treat. Oh. Abby chastises me anytime I even think about giving Junie B a treat. Junie. Junie. Let's try it again. So we've had to back off from that. And, and I'm the world's worst, so she's got her eyes on me. Watch me. Joe is really starting to build that relationship with Junie B, and that is fantastic. Not too shabby. Hey. Later in the day, Joe and Andrea move the training to the couch. Purposely not looking her in the eye. And I think that's good. Success! Look here, Junie. Is it easier if you just jump across? Go, go across. Go, Katie. But is Junie B ready to take a leap of faith? Watch me. <gasps> wow. Good girl, Junie. See, nothing's going to happen. Nothing but well, good. Well, now we've yeah. settled in. That's settling in. Wow. Junie B is on Joe's lap, and she's really relaxed. You want to stay with Daddy? She didn't even go to Andrew when she called her. Good for you, Jim. I'm happy for you. I think he's beginning to win her heart. But no sooner has Junie B warmed up to Joe when things take a turn for the worse. And he misses. Oh. Oh. 
I tried the, the leashing technique with Junie and it wasn't that successful and it was, it was an act of frustration. She could sense that other hand coming over her shoulders and uh, she was skittish and she was backing away. Wow, she has good eyes. Joe, you gotta be patient, otherwise Junie B is gonna pick up on your frustration. Joe is unable to leash Junie B, and Andrea has to step in. That hurt. That hurt the ego. Outside on the walk, the consequences of Joe's failure are apparent. Oh, she's very nervous. Come on, Junie. All right, no, Mom. we've lost it. Come here, Junie. Uh oh. Once again, Junie B digs her heels in. Let's come on. If a dog is fearful, you can't show any kind of anger or frustration, otherwise it's gonna make the dog more anxious. Is Joe back to square one? You think you could walk her without me at all? I don't think she'd go out the door. It's time for Victoria to head back to the Sheltons. Victoria is returning to the Shelton family to reinforce her training. How are you? You haven't just done this just for my benefit. Oh, it wasn't just for you. It was for my benefit. Progress, wow. When I first met Junie B and I saw how scared she was and how her intense, her aggressive response was, I thought, well, this is going to take a long time to solve. But I think the desensitization process that we've been doing with Joe and Spencer has worked so well. She's come through it very quickly, and now she's much more relaxed. I know you are having frustration, Joe, leashing Junie B. Uh, tell me about frust the frustration you are having. I guess a lot of it has to do with just the physical Position, placement. Yeah. Um, it's just Junie and me. And he misses. Oh. Oh. You I couldn't. It was very visible the way my arm was coming mm -hmm. around. If you can change your body position a little bit, mm -hmm. so that you're like this, sort of in a lateral position to you, so right. her body is like this. Then you've got her head and you're not, she doesn't see that. Good girl. There we go. Oh, we did it. She's such a good girl. Let's just try that lateral position. Sure. Okay, see if we can do. And again, I think the most important thing with this is just to not get frustrated. Right. And it was just torn up, so. Right. Oh, I nearly did it. Good girl. Very good. Good girl. Lovely. That was easy. That was perfect. How is this feeling for you? This is a good feeling, Victoria. I mean, this is uh, this is what a dog owner is supposed to be able to do, right? What, well, Andrew? What does this mean for you? You know what? I'm happy that Joe's happy. That's the biggest thing. It's amazing to see that. I'm, months ago, she wouldn't even do this. She would run away, bark. But now, obviously, she's comfortable. And she's sitting in there, and my dad's able to pet her, just like my mom and sister could do. This is so wonderful to see. You guys are like a family. Again, there's no divide, no boys versus girls. And, you know, it's beautiful. Look, she's asleep. Isn't that wonderful? Mm. Oh, thank you. Junie B is like a different dog. She has finally relaxed. Thank you, Victoria. Okay. You've been great. Thank you so much. I definitely understand now what the boys were going through. I would like to say to Victoria, thank you for all that you've done. Your miracle work. I definitely feel that the barrier between boys versus girls has been broken down. Yeah. Thank you. All right, you're so welcome. Good luck. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm really excited about the way Joe and Spencer are reacting toward the dog. You're much you're much nicer when you come into the room now. OK, now are you glad we got the dog? Absolutely. <laughs> I am committed to doing what we have to do with Junie B. I'm already seeing improvement. And so that's huge. The family need to keep training, and they keep on needing to build Junie B's confidence. If they do that, they're going to have a long and happy life together. When I left the Shelton family, the divisions in the household had gone. And I'm pleased to see that since then, they've continued to make progress. 
Junie. Yeah, there's just the leash. See it? Joe's done a great job winning Junie B's confidence. Nervous dogs can find even the smallest things a stressful experience. But if Joe keeps on leashing her like this, eventually Junie B won't even flinch. Doing good. good now. Yeah, she's got a good healthy tail wag going, Spence. You're right. The fact that Joe and Spencer can now walk Junie B without Abby or Andrea even being present is a major achievement. Since Victoria's left, Apple and Zizu have just turned into great dogs. Apple and Zizu, come! My mom and my sister used to not mess with Apple and Zizu, but they've turned that around. The training has really got me more engaged with these dogs. It's really good. good. It's me or the dog. <laughs> Victoria meets newlyweds Josh and Ashley. <laughs> and their three massive Great Danes, Henry, Jackson and new puppy Charlotte. Oh my gosh! The dogs are wreaking havoc at home. It was probably the most insane greeting I've ever had. In the car. Shut up! Stop it! And at work. It's very unprofessional. This cannot continue, and it's not going to continue. <laughs> Ashley's obsession with the dogs. I cross my legs on the sofa and I'll do whatever I want to. As Josh at a breaking point. I never would have pictured myself doing this. Can Victoria convince Ashley to take a step back? I think you get as much separation anxiety as they do. Or will their three Great Danes leave their home? They're probably running around. They're probably eating the sofa cushions. They probably knocked over the coffee table. And their marriage. At the door, Ashley. I can't. In shambles. She's going to tear up our door. <laughs> Victoria Stillwell has been training dogs in Great Britain and the United States for nearly 14 years. Today, she's on her way to meet Josh and Ashley Fort and their three enormous Great Danes. It's important for owners to form a close bond with their pets, but if you don't give your dog some level of independence, you might find yourself in a very unhealthy relationship, and that could have serious consequences. We're newlyweds, just married over a year, and we already have three massive dogs. Henry, Jackson, and Charlotte. I would love, if I had it my way, to have 20 or 30 dogs just running around the house, just open my own rescue. However, Josh says he will divorce me if I bring him any more, so we're gonna stop at three. Before Victoria begins training, she'll spend the day with the family, observing their issues. Come here. When I first rang the doorbell, I heard lots of barks. And then the door opened, and it was madness. Oh, my gosh. Charlotte started fighting with Henry. The couple was trying to keep the dogs back, but they couldn't keep the dogs back. The dogs flew out of the door. The trees fell everywhere. The dogs ran around the porch. I got nearly got knocked over. It was probably the most insane greeting I've ever had. Hi. Hello. Come on. Come on, guys. That was a greeting and a half. Isn't it, though? Come on in and grab a seat before they take it from you. OK. When I finally managed to get in and sit down, the dogs were either fighting over me or fighting with each other and, and then playing and then licking and slobbering and trying to get on the sofa. And it was very difficult to have a conversation with all of them being there. <laughs> oh, gosh. Not a lot of dogs nibble at your ear. But, but, but he is gentle. Yeah. Right. He's very gentle. It's like this. Hmm. He's the gentle one. Henry is not gentle. When he nips, it's not cute, and it's not funny, and it's not gentle. OK. So tell me tell me about other stuff that's going on. They really have become our children. They're so needy, which I just, I guess I love that. that I just, they absolutely couldn't function without me. But what do you think about that? I'm, I'm not on the same page as that. Ashley does think these are her babies, no question. And neither one can live without each other. The three of them go absolutely everywhere with me, because I feel like I'm neglecting them if I leave them home without their mommy. I, I just. Henry, no, sir. I just want her to pet me. We have voices for all the dogs. Ashley started to speak in some different voices. 
A very southern voice for Henry. He's a southern, he's a redneck. A somewhat demented British accent for Jackson. I cross my legs on the sofa and I'll do whatever I want to. And a very princess-like accent for Charlotte. I'm the pretty, pretty princess. A little kooky, but funny. Another off-the-wall habit Ashley has adopted is cooking gourmet meals for the dogs twice a day. I buy a 10-pound thing of ground beef, and Josh cooks Ow. this for me every Sunday. Whoa, that's a hunk of meat. That is a hunk of meat right there. Josh, do you like cooking for the dogs? Um, no, I don't, honestly. Not at all. It's, uh, I, I think it's, I think it's a bit excessive. I don't remember how I got suckered into this, because I never would have pictured myself doing this. I'm getting hungry. I don't know about you. <laughs> I have no problem with the dogs being on this diet, but Josh seems at his wit's end. I think he, in a way, gets very angry that Ashley pays him so much attention, and I think he's had enough. Along with home cooking, the dogs also get constant companionship from Ashley. I take the three dogs everywhere I go. If I go to the grocery store, they come and sit in the car. If I go to the gym sometimes, I'll bring them with me. When I go to work, they come with me. When I go to my family and friends' houses, they have to come with me. I will not leave them. Get back! Once all the dogs were in the car, and Ashley got in, and I tried to get in, Henry put his head out. He did not want me near that car, and he was being ultra protective. I'm going to try and get in here without getting my head bitten off. Shut up! Stop it! Henry! Stop! It's bad. Ashley does yell at the dogs a lot in the car, but the yelling just has no effect on the dogs whatsoever. They don't listen to her. And the yelling makes their behavior worse. Jackson! Henry, would you stop barking? If they see anybody walking along the street, they go ballistic, especially Jackson. Oh, there goes the... Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh. I mean, it is. That's, that's effective. We're on a windy country road. She's driving with one hand as she's trying to push the other dogs with her back, and I'm nervous we're going to have an accident. And when Ashley stops for a quick errand, the dogs pose another kind of danger. If Ashley wants to stop at the supermarket, she leaves the air conditioning on, the car running, but the window's down for the dogs. So anybody passing that car has a huge Great Dane head lunging out at them. Don't touch them. That is a massive liability. I have been in many cars with very difficult dogs, but I have to say, this gets the prize for being the craziest car ride I have ever been on. Jackson! Shut up! Another place the dogs accompany Ashley is to work every single day. All three of the dogs come to work with me because I refuse to leave them home alone during the day. Hey, how you doing? Hi, nice I'm to Alan. meet you. Good Hi, to meet Alan. You. Hi. I'm Ashley's dad, and I'm also the boss man here. OK. At least that's what they tell me. Stop. Hey, stop. Oh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the crate is not attractive. When we walked into Ashley's work, I saw that the dogs have pretty free reign in the office. <laughs> what is it like? working in an environment with these dogs. These guys are pretty rowdy, and at times, you know, it's hard to do business here because we do get some public traffic in here. And I'm afraid that somebody's gonna get bit, especially maybe by Henry, you know, which is gonna create another problem for me. In Alan, Ashley's father, the owner's eyes, uh, it's very unprofessional. And, and I agree, it is. And we cannot seem to get a handle on it. Hey, quit! So tell me, what's going to happen if this situation continues? This cannot continue, and it's not going to continue. And so if we can't get this worked out, then, you know, I guess she'll just have to stay home with the dogs. Are you firing your daughter? Uh, no, I would never fire her. I would retire her. When my father told Victoria that he would re 
quote unquote retire me, I was quite shocked. You know, I always kind of look at this as a joke and for him to actually say that to her is kind of a wake up call for me. It was very upsetting. What is it gonna mean to you, Ashley, if, you, if your father retires <laughs> you as he puts it so nicely? Oh gosh, that would just be a huge financial burden for us. You know, we're newlyweds, we just got our first house. It would just be a huge strain. It would just be horrible. Josh and Ashley, they're newlyweds. They shouldn't start their marriage off like this. They now have three dogs, huge dogs at that, massive liability, exhausting, taking over the home and work and the car and every single situation. It's a nightmare. Coming up, Ashley laughs off Victoria's concerns. That's easier? You're saying the ride in the car is easier? <laughs> Will she realize what's at stake? You have no life. You can't have friends over. You might get fired from your job. Victoria Stilwell has spent the day observing Ashley and Josh's chaotic life with three Great Danes. Now it's time for her to sit down and confront them with the facts. This has been a very interesting day. Sure. <laughs> Craziness. Mm -hmm. And you live this every day. Every day. There is no doubt in my mind that these dogs are very, very much loved. But they are out of control. Now, Ashley, there's one thing that causes a lot of problems for dogs. And that one thing is that when people treat them like human beings. And you've gone over the top. It's too much. Because they've taken over your life. Now, you have admitted they are your children. You feel that they can't exist without you. They exist without you, fine. They've got each other. I was extremely shocked when Victoria made the point that the dogs can and will function perfectly fine without me. So that was a huge eye-opener. And Josh, would you say any of this is taking a toll on your marriage? I, I, I would. I, it, it's taking a lot of time out of our marriage, mm -hmm. which is, that's the most frustrating thing for me. The, the, the fact that we are prisoners to these dogs. Let me talk about your situation at home. When I came through that door... Oh, my gosh! What's happening is you've got three dogs all very excited, redirecting all their excitement and frustration on each other. OK. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> it is an accident waiting to happen. I hope you've got great homeowner's insurance, because you're in for a lawsuit. Mm. Like that. Now, Ashley, I have never been as nervous as I was driving in your car. Oh, there it goes. Oh, dear. If you go for a trip to the convenience store, why do you need to take your dogs? It's easier to just take them than to fight them off That's and easier. leave them. Here. That's easier? You're saying the ride in the car is easier? <laughs> now, you are very lucky you work for your father, but your father has got to the point where he's saying, I'm gonna retire my daughter. Nice way of saying, you're gonna be fired. Then you're gonna be in financial difficulties because mm -hmm. you can't support a mortgage just on what Josh owns. Mm -hmm. So then all the pressure is gonna fall on him. The situation is out of control. For so long you've been enabling the dog's behavior, you've been treating them like children. You have no life. You can't have friends over. You might get fired from your job. This is pure. Pure insanity, pure madness. I have only a very, very short time to rein in three completely out of control dogs. If I do not have your 1,000% commitment, this is not going to work. Are you ready to get started? We're willing to do it. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let's do it. To begin, Victoria wants to give new puppy Charlotte some basic training. I used to love getting up every morning early when it's still cool and walking Henry and Jackson. But now that we have Charlotte, there is no managing her, so we have just put the walks on hold indefinitely. Now remember, it's hard for a little pup to have this self-control, mm -hmm. but she has to learn it. If she doesn't learn it, she's going to be an out-of-control adult. Part of the major reactivity is that these dogs aren't getting out. So Victoria wants to start with walking one-on-one. -on -one. The first challenge is to stop Charlotte from wandering off. I'm going to use this wall, and I'm going to walk up and down this wall. So she's got really nowhere else to go. Go. Whenever Charlotte pulled, 
Good girl. I went off in the other direction so that her pulling wasn't reinforced. She realised that mm -hmm. if she wanted to get to where she wanted to go, she'd have to walk well on the leash. Uh Oh my gosh, I don't think this is possible. Then, Victoria introduces a command to encourage Charlotte to stay by her side. Close, good girl. Close. Let's go. Close, good girl. When she pulled, I used a vocal correction of an ah, good girl, up. Turned the other way. As soon as she came up to me and was close to me, I said close. Close. Reinforced it for that. Good girl. When I wanted Charlotte to stop, I said stop, and stop. I put my foot in front of her, as if to say, when I say stop, you have to listen to me. Let's go. Stop. Stop. Wow. It was really cool to see Charlotte do exactly what Victoria told her. And it just showed me that we were never persistent enough. Now it's Ashley's turn. Okay. Hey, get up. No, no, don't let her get to where she Charlotte, wants to go. Let's go. Good girl. Close. Charlotte. Charlotte. Charlotte wasn't focusing on Ashley very well. She's really got to take that, that leadership role. Stop. Stop. I don't want you to jerk like that. You, you might have to put a tiny bit of pressure, but I want you to do more body language. OK. Close. Stop. Get to... Good. I want Ashley and Josh to reinforce this training again and again and again, because the dogs need exercise. They've got three rambunctious dogs here. Yeah, these dogs hardly get any exercise at all. Charlotte, you are going to be walking well on a leash perfectly very Can't soon. Can't wait. <laughs> Me either. Coming up, Ashley has to take a step away. I want you to go out for a couple of hours. But will her worst fears come true? They're probably running around. They're probably eating the sofa cushions. They're probably knocked over the coffee table. Victoria Stillwell has begun basic training with Ashley and Josh's out-of-control Great Danes. Stop! Stop. Now, she wants to address the dangerous situation in Ashley's car. First thing I did with the car was to put up a reliable divider so that the dogs couldn't knock it down. And that's not the only change she's made. Oh, wow. In order for Ashley to get some control, I had to cut the vision out completely so that the dogs would focus on Ashley. And this is lawful, it's not against the law because you can still see out of your wing mirrors, but I've blacked out the back of your car here. The reason why all of them are going off when they see people come, it's the visual stimulation. When you cut out the visual stimulation, then you're gonna have dogs that don't react so much. Come on. The modifications have an immediate impact. Nice to be able to get in without my head spitting off. And no barking. The dog's going to be able to see out now. But as soon as Jackson or any one of them barks, this is closed and we'll cut their vision off completely. OK. I'm going to operate the curtain, so you just drive. The first few miles are surprisingly calm. Do you keep saying quiet? Yeah, good. I like just to say quiet, good. So they stop at the market to continue the training. <laughs> Enough. Five seconds of quiet. Wow. Good. Quiet. Quiet. Very good. Ashley gets to test what she's learned when a friend stops by to chat. Hey, hey Ashley. Hi. How you doing? How are you? Oh, Enough. Enough. You got dogs. Enough. Now, ignore them. Keep talking. How are you? Oh, great. How are you doing? Doing good. Doing some shopping today? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, now they got five seconds of quiet. You open it up. Good quiet. I think that that is a miracle curtain. I've never seen the dogs behave so well in the car. I never imagined it was possible. And I will be using that curtain daily. I can't believe how good they were. Your challenge, and this might take weeks, it might take months, is to have all the panels off and you're controlling those dogs with your voice. There's no reason why the dogs need to be controlling in the car anymore. It's going to be a while, though, before all the dogs get it. But I believe that in the future they will. Back at the house, Victoria wants to address the dog's outrageous greeting behavior. Oh, hi. Oh, my God. Hi, 
Okay. I want to give the dogs a ritual of behavior. And I want to do a ritual for you that you can use with guests that is going to be a little time consuming to begin with, but is going to become a habit and is going to keep your guests safe. I had a friend that the dogs know but have nipped before come to the door. Just get up calmly. Take them all into the bedroom. The goal of this training is that when the dogs hear the doorbell, instead of rushing to the door, they go to the safe place, which is the bedroom, and everybody can be more relaxed. Hi, Sandy. OK, and I want you to have this magazine just to look at. I wanted Josh to bring Henry up first to greet the guest, because Henry is the most problematic. So I wanted him to see guests coming in as a good thing rather than a bad thing. Now, if you go and get, take Henry back into the room and bring Jackson and, and Charlotte out. Oh, dear. Charlotte jumps on you, stand up and ignore. Each time Charlotte jumped up on Sandy, the guest, Sandy stood up and just ignored her so that she was boring for Charlotte. And eventually, Charlotte just walked away. Now they've lost interest, Josh, you let Henry out again. If the dogs come up to the guest and they're crowding the guest, Ashley and Josh can get up, put their bodies between the dogs and the guest, and tell the dogs to back up. Get back. Try back. not to physically touch the dogs, just tell them to back. back. Good. Well, it was a whole lot better coming in the house and not having the dogs all up under you, so it was much more pleasant to be able to come in and visit. I want you to take back your space. Right. It's just 100% better than what we've been doing. The result was fantastic. So it's, I, I'd be more than happy to do it, whatever it takes. The whole ritual is just basically not allowing the dogs to get to the crazy level. It's all calm. Now that the dogs are learning to relax when people come into the house, Victoria wants to show Ashley that they will be just as calm when she and Josh leave the house. These three dogs are so dependent on me that they can't even function without me for a work day. I've left them with Josh before when he was off, and he said they were crying and begging and waiting for me the entire eight hours I was gone. Well, now I want you to go out. And I want you to go out for a couple of hours. And what I've done is that there are some cameras up here that's going to record what your dogs do when you leave. OK, I okay. see. Uh, I was a little worried about the destruction, but more so about just leaving them and how they would feel while I was gone. Do not spend a long time saying goodbye to these dogs. In fact, all I want you to do is to say goodbye and go. No long, I'll see you later. <laughs> Are you going to be OK? <laughs> exactly because what I do. Okay. Because that's feeding their anxiety. That's going to make them anxious. All right. Say goodbye. Bye, guys. Bye. And come. I want Ashley and Josh to be able to leave the dogs. I'm not concerned with the dogs being anxious. I am concerned that Charlotte will chew. While Ashley and Josh head to a coffee shop, Victoria checks in on the dogs. All good so far? These dogs are not suffering with separation anxiety. Ashley, however, isn't faring so well. They're probably running around. They're probably eating the sofa cushions. They probably knocked over the coffee table. I think Henry is probably freaking out. His mommy and his daddy left, and we didn't even say bye. I think he's sleeping. There wasn't any major anxiety. And eventually, all three of them settle down and lay in the sitting room. I'm really anxious and I'm ready to go. Let's go. Hey. So, um, it was a really severe case of separation anxiety. One of the worst I've ever seen. And it was yours. Because your dogs <laughs> just went. Oh, my gosh. I knew it. I didn't know that was coming. It's kind of sad that they don't miss me as much as I thought, but I'm just still relieved. I would rather be able to leave them and know they're OK. So kind of bittersweet. Coming up, will Ashley finally let go? You need 
to detach yourself slightly. It's not good for these dogs to be so dependent upon you. Having worked with Ashley and Josh's Great Danes at home, now Victoria wants to restore calm to their workplace. One of the biggest problems that the couple is having is at work. There's nowhere really for the dogs to go. I want to create a safe haven for the dogs. There's a particular room on the property where the dogs can go to, where they can have a little bit of time to themselves and a bit of space. Welcome to the calming room. There are going to be only two dogs in the room at a time because three dogs in here would be too small. You have to deal with one dog out there, which is much easier than dealing with three. You can do your work. Right. And when they come in here, it's their time of zen. Now, we really weren't using that office for much of anything but just kind of a storage space. And if that's a space that will work well for getting better behavior from these dogs, and I support that fully. Whilst they're here, I'm going to put this music on. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a special calming CD for dogs. Why is it especially for dogs? Well, the amount of notes per minute actually um, lessens a dog's heart rate. Wow. I never would have and calms the dogs down. I'm so excited about it, because we need all the help calming them as we can get. You can hear that how where the notes come. <laughs> I feel relaxed already. Right. Yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> so, I don't think the dog should be in here for any more than half an hour at a time without being taken out to pee, without being taken out to run around. How long do you think we need to do this? I see this going on for a very, very long time. I mean, I would temporary. like this to become part of life. Okay. I would like this to become the norm. Mm -hmm. I was I was a little surprised that that was a, uh, this is a forever thing. This leaving them in the back office is forever. This is, n this is not an excuse to bring the dogs to work every day. I want you to try at least a couple of mornings to leave the dogs at home. Okay. I think I can do that. Wait. At first, Jackson and Henry are a little concerned, but just seconds later, they settle down. That gives Victoria a chance to work one-on-one -on -one with Charlotte. This is the training that I want you to do with every dog. And I'm going to show you with Charlotte, and it's your job to start training with the other dogs. But I just want them to go to their bed when you say, go to your bed. I'm not sure that Charlotte's going to take that very well. She needs your one-on-one -on -one time as a pup. And this time can be her quiet time here. Okay. Victoria I... uses a vocal command paired with a treat to encourage Charlotte to stay on her bed. Stay. No, up, up. Mm -mm. Here, on your bed. Oh. Stay. 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 I'm going to be working here. Stay. Uh, I'm not angry with her. I'm not going to be angry. Come on. You bet, good girl. Stay. We usually yell at her, so that's no, very different not. than what we've been doing. Because she's quite sensitive. Stay. This is a lot of self control for this dog. Stay. Stay. Very good. Very good. After a few minutes, Charlotte started to pick up uh, Victoria's training. And I'm just shocked at how smart she really is. Now it's Ashley's turn to give it a try. Take it away. Charlotte, get on your bed. Good girl. Whoops. Good girl, on your bed. On your bed. Good girl. Stay. 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 Good girl. Stay. Very good girl. Stay. Good girl, stay. What's it like to see this little out of control, crazy Charlotte? I can't believe it. it. Listening to you and having some self control. It's unbelievable. It's a different dog right there. Never seen him do that. I can't believe she's staying for me. 
I was very proud of Charlotte. I thought she did very well. She actually stayed on her bed, and I think that we're going to make a lot of progress with her. I'm leaving you now for a little while, and uh, you have three unruly dogs, so you have a lot of work to do. First of all, at work, it is your duty to keep your employees safe. It is your duty to keep your father happy. Right? <laughs> you need to detach yourself slightly. It's not good for these dogs to be so dependent upon you. All right? You need to be able to let go. I would like you to take Charlotte out and carry on with the walking training with her. I'd like you to do the same sort of thing with both the dogs. OK. And I want you to walk each dog separately. It's been a pleasure working with you. Good luck. Thank and you. I shall see you upon your return. You've got a big job ahead of you. We oh, sure do. Oh, 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 thank gosh. you so much for right. helping you us. So yeah, you're welcome. Good luck. Bye. Bye. I really feel like I've given Ashley and Josh a lot of options with which to train their dogs. And I think if they follow them, there's no reason why the whole family can't be successful. Coming up. I'll see you in a little bit. Bye, guys. Ashley heads to work without the dogs. Yeah, where are the dogs? I'm leaving them home for a half day. But what will she find when she gets home? Hey guys, Mommy's home. Who <laughs> oh, did that? That is bad! Victoria Stillwell has left Josh and Ashley for a few days to continue the training on their own. So far, the dogs have continued to make progress in the car. With the dogs behaving perfectly, Ashley is able to concentrate on the road, even with the curtain open and the back panel removed. The car training went very well. I can actually drive and focus on what I'm doing and not worry about getting in a wreck every time we hit the streets. Very good puppies. Back at the house, the couple has a friend come over to work on the greeting routine. While Josh removes the dogs, Ashley gets their guests settled. Hey, Come on, Amber. How are you, Jennifer? Good, we'll have to have okay. you sit right here. She needs a magazine. Oh, gosh. I have faith. Back. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Hey, Henry. Oh, he's being so good. Good boy. So now he's comfortable. That's awesome. It worked. So I'm going to let the other two out now. OK, OK, sounds good. Encouraged by Henry's calm behavior, the couple allows him to stay while Charlotte and Jackson are let out. Back. Back. Coats on her face. Good boy. That's good. After just a few moments, all the dogs lose interest. There we go. Yeah, it worked. Fantastic. I didn't get slobbered on near as much this time as I had in the past, so it was a much more enjoyable visit with them this time. Later in the week, Victoria checks in. I can't wait to see how Josh and Ashley have been getting on with their homework. Today, the couple has brought the dogs to the office to attempt the new routine. Stay. Stay. Throughout the day, Ashley and Josh rotate the dogs between the calming room and the main office. Hey, down. Good boy. Perfect. If you continue to work all the dogs individually, you are well on the way to having three calm dogs in the office, and that'll make the boss very happy. Later in the day, Ashley and Josh leave Jackson and Henry at home in order to practice with Charlotte on the leash. Eh, let's go. She still has a couple problems, but let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Close. It takes some work, Close. but Charlotte quickly catches on. She is doing awesome. Well done. You timed that perfectly, and now you're going to be walking that puppy with no problem at all. Let's go. But a passing car reveals a serious new problem. Oh, oh my god. I hate Let's how go. she does that. We have to work on that. Yeah. Oh dear, that is very dangerous. We are going to have to put a stop to that immediately. Back, Charlotte. Back at the house, Josh decides to save some time by walking Henry and Jackson together. See, this is not a good idea to leave her by herself. What are we going to do? Just, we have to for now. Should we let her out here? 
You know, she can jump well, over She's going to tear up our door. Josh, I can see you're trying to cut corners here, but leaving Charlotte alone is not a good idea. Okay. This is why I haven't been taking them for walks anymore. <laughs> we'll be back, Charlotte. This is just a nightmare. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Charlotte has gotten out. Oh, my god. Did she jump the fence? This is not going to work. Here. I don't have three hours to spend walking. I don't either. Each dog individually. Let's just go inside. Forget it. Come on. This is a disaster. Now, Henry and Jackson haven't been walked at all. And this is what happens when you push the training too fast. The next day, Ashley feels ready to leave the dogs at home while she heads off to work. I'll see you in a little bit. Bye, guys. This is great. Ashley is finally separating herself from the dogs for a little while. Good morning, Barry. How's it going? Good morning, Ashley. It's going pretty well. How are you doing? No dogs today. Yeah, where are the dogs? I am leaving them home for a half day. But as the hours pass by, Charlotte instigates some trouble. <gasps> they have completely torn the sofa apart. Hey, guys. Come with home. Even though this is a setback, Ashley, you can't give up now. You have to remember, Charlotte's just a puppy. I'm on my way back. Coming up, Ashley and Josh want to throw in the towel. We kind of have decided, well, maybe we just can't leave them until she's older. Victoria is returning to Ashley and Josh's home to follow up on where they've gone wrong in her absence. <laughs> Thank you. Come on in. Hi, How are you? Oh, gosh, it's so nice to be able to walk in. <laughs> Space. It was so nice to walk through that door and not be jumped on or mauled by all of the dogs. Let's talk about the uh, leaving them here. Now, I know there was a problem leaving them here. They destroyed the entire cushion. There was a million pieces of cotton. I told you they would not be anxious. Right. But I said, right. I don't know if they will chew. She is still a puppy. She's still going to chew. So it's something we're going to have to address. We kind of have decided, well, maybe we just can't leave them until she's older. No, that's absolutely not what you do. You are so emotionally attached to your dogs that anything that they do, that you deem that they're, oh my gosh, they're stressed, oh my gosh, they're doing this, oh my gosh, they're doing that. You are panicking. Mm -hmm. Let's gear ourselves up for what happened at the, uh, for, on the walk. Totally Josh's I fault. have never seen two people so out of control. It was not pretty. It was not pretty. What's this? Oh, they'll be all right walking them all together. I jumped, I, I jumped the gun. Do you know, that is the biggest mistake people make My... and their dogs fail because of it. Yeah. So why? Can you not walk them one by one? What if we take Charlotte one way, one of the other dogs oh. the other way? Oh, it'll be an absolute nightmare, let me tell you. In the back of my mind, I knew it wasn't going to work, but I just I had to see for myself. She quickly set me straight and, and said, we're talking months here, if not longer. Straight away, Victoria wants to address Charlotte's dangerous new habit. Oh, oh my god. Which requires a new command. I wanted to teach Charlotte the word leave it. I just start with a closed hand. Dog tries to work out how she's going to get it out. My hand, as soon as she takes her nose away from it, she's going to get it. Leave it. Good girl. I'm going to do an open hand now so she can see it and smell it. Leave it. Good girl. Leave it. Oh, it's working. Leave it. <laughs> Good girl. I love teaching leave it to smart dogs because they get it so fast. And literally within five minutes, she understood what the word meant. So that meant I could go out on the road and use it. Charlotte, sit. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Leave it. Leave it. 
Very good. <laughs> wow. Very good. Oh my gosh. Now Victoria has Ashley try. Okay. Okay, go. Leave it, Charlotte. Leave it. Good girl. Very good, good girl. I didn't All think right. she was gonna do it for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you see? I was absolutely shocked when I did the same command and it still works. It feels good. Yeah, doesn't it just? <laughs> it does. Doesn't it just? And your dog's listening to you and respecting you. Ashley was so delighted at Charlotte's progress. I think now she sees how important it is that she becomes a real leader to her dogs. Back inside, Victoria has a simple solution for the couple to use while Charlotte is still in her puppy stage. So I put these baby gates up because you need to leave Charlotte in a puppy-proof room while she's still at the chewing stage. When you go out, leave the guys in there as usual. Charlotte comes in here and you can put um, any of her dinner here, a bit of her meat and a bit of the dry food, pack it in nicely and she's really going to chew to get the food Great out. Great idea. Yeah. I'm definitely more confident that leaving now will be much less of an issue because now Charlotte can't tear anything up and that was really the only the only issue we had left. I want you to continue everything that you've learned. And you, Ashley, especially you, remember the codependency thing's got to stop. Mm -hmm. These dogs can be successful without you. You can have a life without them. You can have a great life with them, too. It's so important that Ashley distances herself a little bit. Codependency is not good for anybody. And if she can, she's going to be happy, and her dog's going to be much more confident. Everything's really good. The training has gone very well. Victoria has given us some great tools. Stop. And it's made uh, mine and Ashley's life much better. Josh and I are so happy with the changes we've made with the dogs. We have time for each other. We can go on dates. We don't have to be constantly stressed and arguing about the three dogs. Isn't that nice now? It's so quiet in here, Josh. There's no barking. Nobody's stressed out anymore. Too. Overall, the work situation is so much better. No one's stressed out anymore. We can have the dogs there. On this special episode of It's Me or the Dog, Victoria takes on the world of puppies. Look, she wants to play. She meets two different families facing two very different puppy problems. What would you guys name a dog if we had a dog? So this is Tico. There's Elise and John, whose five-month-old rescue is running rings around them. But she's also showing a disturbing dark side. And I'm bleeding. Oh. The Thielens family are just starting their puppy adventure. We've never had a puppy before. They're trying to choose the perfect family pet. Does the dog eat the cat food or? But they're already in over their heads. Woo! You feed it, you walk it, and, and then what? Two families and two predicaments means double trouble for Victoria. Oh. Owning a puppy takes a lot of effort. The hard work starts now. Victoria Stillwell has been training dogs of all sizes for 14 years, and she knows that the most crucial time to train a dog is when it's young. Having a puppy can be a fun, rewarding experience, but it's also a huge responsibility. If you don't invest the time and training right from the start, your puppy's behavior can quickly spiral out of control. Victoria's first stop is a household that already has a puppy, a five-month-old Rottweiler mix that is causing big problems. I'm Elise. I live with my boyfriend, John, and our five-month-old exuberant puppy, Raven. <coughs> the biggest issue that I have with Raven is the nipping and biting. Hey, Raven. Raven's teeth are small now, but when she gets older, I'm not looking forward to her clamping down on my leg or on my arm. I've repeatedly told Elise, no, we're not ready for a puppy. A puppy's gonna be too much of a burden to be in an apartment. Mom. The thing that bothers me the most about John is the lack of help that I receive from him. I'm the one who takes her out all the time. I'm the one who usually feeds her. Victoria will start by observing the couple for the day to see where the problems lie. Hello. Hi, how are Hi. you? I'm hey, Elise. Hey, nice to meet you. you. Too. Oh, this is oh, Raven. Look at this. <laughs> oh, my. So this is the call. Oh, oh hello. Whoopsie. <laughs> I see that gate's effective. Yeah. She has some sharp claws on her. Ow. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Immediately, Raven started to jump at me. Raven. She was also starting to nip me. And she grabs hold hard. How are you doing? Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you Hi, also. Good to meet you. Whoa. 
tell me about She's all the issues you're having. Ravens a handful. Oh, I Raven see. Off. Wow. wow. Off. Raven off. When I sat down, Raven was all over me. She's very friendly, but she uses her mouth and she nips very, very hard. And you can't even pull your hand out because it just rips on the way out. It does rip on the way out. That kind of hurts, puppy. It's very normal for puppies to be mouthy and to chew things, but each time Raven's mouth went on my arm, her little sharp teeth dug in, and that hurts. Oh, OK. Um, ow. I'm just one huge big chew toy, aren't I? That is, this is really, woo! Yeah. Raven doesn't have any sense of boundaries. <laughs> she's jumping up on me, John and Elise. She's biting my shoes, she's biting my clothes. Nothing that I can do can get this puppy off me. So what would you do now with her? I would just usually put her up in her cage. Could you do that? Yeah, sure. Let's just see what she does when you do that. Let's go. How long does she spend in her crate a day? I'll probably say 70% of the day in, in the crate. She's in the crate when we're not at home. She's in the crate when we're asleep. And anytime she misbehaves, she's in the crate. So that's basically all of her day. That is a lot of crate time. No wonder Raven is crazy when she comes out. When Raven does get some free time out of her crate, John likes her to have a little playtime. How do you play with her? I normally like to just grab one of her toys. OK, show me. Play with her. Hey, Ray Paul. Come on. Come on. But Elise isn't a fan of John's games. I definitely think that John playing with Raven is one of the reasons why she's kind of aggressive playing. John is always riling her up and getting Raven to snap at him. When I come along and Raven's snapping at me, I'm not as able to deal with it as John would be. What do you want me to do? Personally, I just want her to stop uh, evacuating in my apartment. Evacuating. <laughs> I love the way you say it. How many times a day do you take her outside to toilet? I'd say two or three. Sometimes we'll take her outside to use the bathroom, and then, like, 20 minutes later, she'll, she'll go again. Do you argue over her? We do. She complains about me not taking Raven out as much as she does. But I'd like to remind her that she agreed to take her out all that she needed to when she got a puppy. John told me before we ever got a puppy that if I got a puppy, it would be all of my responsibility. I have to admit that I did not believe him, and <laughs> it looks like John was serious. I thought I would get some help on this. If Elise didn't realize that a puppy was going to be a lot of work before, she definitely realizes it now. Now she sees that there is a price that comes with that cute, cuddly puppy. Left to handle Raven on her own, Elise often takes her to a nearby lot to allow her to run off some steam. Can you let her off? Sure. If you'd want to get her back, how do you get her back? Let's say if you did it now. Raven. Raven, come here. Come here. Good girl. <laughs> but when it's time to go home, okay. Raven reveals a darker side. And that, especially, the, and that's, ah! Raven suddenly started to go at Elise. When Elise put her back on the leash, Raven got angry. And the nipping and the biting wasn't just play. And I'm bleeding. Oh, really? She, oh, wow. Ooh. All right, let's take her back. OK. Raven was biting so hard that she actually drew blood on Elise. This isn't normal nipping and mouthing. This isn't friendly play. This is a dog getting frustrated. Now that Victoria has a better idea of what she's dealing with, she wants to sit down with John and Elise for a serious chat. I know that there's things that Elise and I are doing wrong, and hopefully Victoria can correct them, but I don't want her shaking that finger. Getting a puppy is not as easy as people initially think. Number one, she expresses herself with her mouth. It hurts, I've got all the scratches on my hands still to prove it. It hurts now, but when she grows into adulthood and she's Orally fixated, wow. That is gonna be very serious, gonna be very, very dangerous. So we have to stop the behavior right now. It's very important for puppies to have play. But what is this all getting her riled up by playing with your arms in your hand? Encouraging her, encouraging her, saying, bite me, bite me, here are my hands, bite me. What is that? I don't know, it's just the way I've always played with, with my dog. You can't tell her off for nipping. 
yet encourage you to do that in play. You have to use discipline to guide your dog. We need to make the crate a better place for her, not a place of punishment. You can't use the place where she is most of the day to be a place of punishment for a timeout. It's not fair. The crate has to be a place that she likes being in. The house training. You take her out four times a day. Still a little too little. Now, I saw something that really concerned me on the walk. When you put Raven back on the leash after her running around, she got angry. She did, and I felt it. That mouthing and that playful nipping suddenly turned. You're like, don't put me back on the leash. Mm -hmm. We have to address that right now. But I'm glad I'm here. Because if I wasn't, I could see Raven going down a very, very bad path. And this is where you come in, John. I know you didn't really want Raven, but you don't have a choice now. She's here, and you need to help out more. I am a bit concerned about having to change my schedule around Raven. Uh, I think it's going to impact Elise a little bit more than myself, but I do think that it may be slightly inconvenient for both of us. Do I have your 100% commitment? Yes. Yes. And you're not just saying that because I'm here? <laughs> no. All right. I'm going to have to do some major intervention here. Raven is a lovely puppy. She's very friendly, but she is showing some worrying signs. At the moment, she's small, but soon she's going to grow very, very big, very, very powerful. Coming up, Victoria has a new approach to puppy discipline. Uh-oh. And later... You guys want a puppy, yeah? Yeah. Victoria prepares a second family for their very first puppy. I put in a puppy and, like, finally it's, like, happening. Ah! Victoria is immersed in the world of puppies. I'd probably say 70% of the day in the crate. She's already witnessed the mistakes one family has been making with their five-month-old pup, right. Raven. Now, she wants to put right John and Elise's puppy mistakes, starting with Raven's ridiculously undersized living quarters. I have for you a crate. Da -da -da. This thing is huge. Wow. Yeah, now it is huge. Raven's crate is much too small for her. She needs to be in a much larger crate so that she can stand up, turn around, be able to lie down in comfort. I guess Raven was actually kind of cramped in that little crate, which is probably why she didn't want to get in it too often. Raven! Good girl! Yay! There you go. I just put little treats in there. Good girl. And get her used to going in and out. Good girl. Close the door for a couple of seconds, and then I gradually build it up. Raven warmed up to the crate a lot quicker than normal. I guess some part of that was that we weren't forcing her to go in the crate like we normally are. This is never, ever used as a punishment. Crate should be a comfortable, den-like space where the dog feels safe in it. If a crate is used for punishment, then of course the dog doesn't want to go in it. Keep the crate door open when you're here so she can go in and out. Having the new crate makes me feel um, really good for Raven, that she has somewhere comfortable to lay down and uh, something with no bad memories attached to it. The crate now designated as a positive place for Raven. Victoria wants to instill a more constructive form of discipline in the house. I want to stop her from mouthing so much and from jumping up. When I came here to observe, I mean, I was getting jumped up on when I was standing. Ow! Yeah, she does. When I was sitting. Um, ow. I don't want Raven to continue this behavior, especially into adulthood because then it goes from being just annoying to being dangerous. So I want to do something that's going to address both the jumping and the mouthing. I want to do a removal technique. I'm going to use this. And the reason why I've got a chain leash is that when she jumps up to try and bite the leash, that's not going to be too pleasant. So I'm going to put her leash on. Yeah, it doesn't feel good, does it? Mm-hmm. I'd like you both just to sit down on the sofa. Good girl. She jumps up on your mouths, you at all. Uh-oh. I just said, uh-oh, and removed her. Training a puppy should never be confrontational. You don't want your puppy to fear you by dominating it. So I'd like you to take over. I'm going to come and sit down. Any mouthing, jumping up, biting. She's out, OK? Hi. Hi, sweetheart. OK. Oh, let's go. Let's go. I'd like you to say, ah, so it's a really clear, different marker. 
Victoria still wants the couple to give affection. Come here, Raven. But if she starts to mouth, ah. okay. she is removed before the behavior can escalate. Nice. Good. That's great, Elise. That's perfect. After only a few attempts, Victoria's calm approach pays off. Hi. Hi. Good girl. Hi, puppy. After working with Victoria, I'm very confident that John and I will be able to train Raven to be calmer and to exhibit the good behavior that we want. Now, John, I know you like rough housing, going like this no more. The very fact that he played rough with her was actually encouraging her to bite his arms and his hands. No more rough play. The only interaction between you and her is nice, gentle stroking, OK? OK. It's important to praise a puppy when a puppy's done well. Mark every single good behavior. If puppy is praised for a behavior, it's more likely to offer you that behavior again. Coming up, Raven's not going home without a fight. Keep her away from you. And Victoria gives a second family a lesson in Puppy 101. You can't give a puppy free reign of the house. There'll be accidents everywhere. Ay, ay, ay. Uh-oh. Victoria Stillwell is on a mission to help two different families with their puppy problems. Today, she's brought John and Elise to a local dog park to address their pup Raven's dangerous nipping habit. I was concerned about her behavior when you put her back on the leash. Raven is very angry when she gets put on the leash, and she's doing some damage to the point where she drew blood on Elise. <laughs> that behavior is potentially very dangerous, especially if she keeps continuing it until she's older. So if we can just let her off and just let her run around. And say, go, that's it. I want you to call her back to you. I want you to put her into a sit. As you put the leash on, give her a treat. Raven, come here. Sit. Give her a treat. Lovely. The goal of this training is so that Elise can get Raven on the leash and that Raven doesn't try and attack her. You're turning her brain from feeling the emotion of anger to working. Unleash her, let her run again. Good. Tell her go. 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 So by just doing this, she doesn't actually know what's going to happen. Am I just going to hang out? Am I going to be taken back? Am I going to be let off? So now call her to you. Raven. Good girl. Sit. Good girl. Now she's a bit of a calm frame mind. You put the leash on. So far, Raven yeah. is surprisingly calm. I need to walk out. But when it's time to leave, Raven's old habits kick in. Be there again. Right, right. Hey. Hey. It definitely concerned me when I saw Raven biting at Elisa's pants leg. I had never seen that out of Raven before. Walk back in again. With Raven showing no signs of relenting, Victoria is forced to step in. Because you've got her on a harness, you can keep her away from your body by this, by lifting her up like that. OK. OK? I don't like to be confrontational with a dog, but in that situation, Raven was getting angrier and angrier, and the only thing I could do was to hold her away from me until she calmed down, like that. Now that Raven is calm, Elise tries again. I want you now to take her out again. Raven, sit. Good. Good girl, let's go. Keep her away from you. Make the leash short, that's it. And don't care how much she fights. Up. By keeping Raven at arm's length, she's unable to nip at Elise, and the tantrum soon subsides. Okay. Try it again. Sit. Good. Let's go. Good. Good that's girl. nice. The couple still have to keep practicing, but overall, Raven was really responsive. Once a puppy's learnt, you're on the right track. Raven has shown that she is capable of changing her ways. But she's not the only one who will have to make adjustments. And I want to go through a schedule and a routine that you're going to have with Raven every day. With the schedule, Raven is going to have less accidents inside the home. Ah. <laughs> Victoria wants the number of times Raven is taken out to dramatically increase, and she's counting on John to help out. I was happy that Victoria actually put on the schedule when John needs to take her out. I think that it's really going to encourage him to take her out more often. So you're taking her out seven, eight, nine, 
nine times in the day. My Lord, nine times a day? I walk her probably once a weekend on Saturdays. All right, so you guys committed to the schedule? Yes. Yes. OK, good. I hope John's OK with his new responsibilities. I want to have faith that he is going to follow through. He needs to. The more time and effort he puts into his puppy now, the less problems there are going to be in the future. You working together, you're going to be consistent, plus you're going to help Elise. No more rough play. Redirect any chewing onto a toy. Practice with a chain leash the removal technique. You can do it when you're both here or if you have a guest come in. So good luck, and I'll see you in a few days. Thank you. All right. Thank you very you're much. You're very welcome. See you guys. Bye, Raven. Bye. Bye. The tools that Victoria has shown us and seeing how much Raven has calmed down, so I'm definitely looking forward to getting her more training and having a calmer dog. Now that she's set John and Elise back on the right path, Victoria is on her way to the Thielens family to make sure they start their own puppy adventure off right. Most people are fond of the idea of getting a puppy, but often miss the most important step, which is to carefully consider all the factors before you bring the puppy home. My name is Katie Thielens. John and I, we have three kids. Maggie's 11 years old, and Jack and Claire are twins, and they're six and a half years old. See, beagles are cute. We've always wanted a dog, but I think Maggie was the force behind getting the dog. It's been like six or seven years um, that I've wanted a puppy, and like finally it's like happening. What would you guys name a dog if we had a dog? We would name it Rocco. The children may have been planning for some time, but not everyone is well prepared. I know you feed it, you walk it, and, and then what? Victoria will help the family bring their new puppy home. But first, she wants to guide them through some key preparations. Hello. Hi, Hello. Nice Victoria. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come All here. Right. Yes, I'm looking forward to this. Hello. Here we go, Hi. guys. Hi. You guys want a puppy, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you thought what kind of puppy you want? I wanted a boxer. You wanted a boxer? I like papillons because they're cute. Like, you <laughs> do? Okay. What kind of puppy were you guys looking for? Uh, not a little fluffy, yappy thing, um, and not a great big, too hard to handle uh, okay. sort of dog. Just a family dog. All right. So no boxers and no <laughs> papillons. <laughs> well, perhaps not. Yeah. It's really important that the family choose a puppy that they're going to be able to deal with. The dog has to meet your lifestyle, because if you're a low-energy family with a high-energy dog, that dog's going to suffer. We've never had a puppy before. You've never had a puppy? No. We're going to go to a rescue shelter to mm -hmm. try and find one. What sort of requirements do you need from that dog? We want a dog that's going to grow up with us as a family. That we're, These kids are little, and I don't want it to grow any bigger than they are. Right. So who is going to be the one who's going to be the main carer? <laughs> you. Mommy. You're going to chip in. You are all going to train it. How about that? <laughs> Getting a puppy is not a decision that should be taken lightly. It looks fun, but it's a lot of work. You are responsible for your puppy's education. You're responsible for giving your puppy boundaries. You are responsible for house training your puppy. Everything comes down to you. Take me around the house, show me where you think you're going to keep puppy during the day, where you want puppy to sleep, that kind of stuff. Sounds great. Okay. I'm All not right. entirely sure, though. The goal of my observation today is to get a feel of the house, scope things out, so that I can set everything up for puppy success. I'm hopeful for my floors, my new floors. Your floors, you don't want little nails scratching. No, I don't. OK. Do they come with booties? Can I get booties for the dog? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm really glad I came here, because the family don't really know anything about dogs, let alone puppies. Victoria, this is our laundry room, and I'm thinking it might be a good place to keep a puppy. We feed the cat in here, so I need to find a new place to do that, I'm guessing. Right. Does the dog eat the cat food, or...? Yes, dog will eat cat food. Okay. And actually, cat food's not very good for dogs. It's very high in protein. So yes, okay. you definitely have to find somewhere else for the cat. Okay. You can't give a puppy free reign at the house. Okay. Not until it's toilet trained. Otherwise, there'll be accidents everywhere. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it now. Okay. Katie now sees that actually this is probably more work than she first thought. The more I'm telling her, the more overwhelmed she's getting. But the preparations won't be left to Katie alone. Everyone will have to do their part. I want everyone to do something now. Get down on your tummies. Everybody get down on your tummies. 
put your head down like that. Anything that you see on this level is going to be chewed. Maggie, look behind you. What's on the ground underneath the chest there? And electrical wires and stuff. Electrical wires. It's very dangerous. So what we have to do is we have to puppy-proof the room, which means we have to make the room safe for puppy, OK? Victoria made some really good points that I didn't even think about. I would have never been prepared for, to get a puppy. OK. Coming up, it's decision time for the Thielens. So who are you going to pick? Victoria Stillwell is in the midst of a puppy intervention. I don't care how much she fights. She's already helped Elise and John with their wayward puppy, Raven. Now, she and the Thielens family are on their way to find the perfect pet to add to their brood. Today, we get to get a puppy. OK, everybody. Let's go. The Thielens know they want a dog, but they don't know much else. Family looking for a medium-sized dog, nothing too big, nothing too small, and something that would fit with their home, would fit with their family. The fact that they've got young children is an important factor. The first step is to settle on the right breed. <laughs> hey, guys. Look at them. Now, these are the Lab Shepherd mixes. They're beautiful, though. If you don't want a big dog, Lab Shepherds, they can grow to be quite big. All right, let's take a look at some let's more. keep going. Hello! <laughs> Again, probably too big for you. We came across the Beagle Basset Hound mixes, and straight away I could see that the Thielens were very interested in those. I could see taking one of these little guys okay. home. A Beagle Basset Hound is very middle of the road. It's going to fit perfectly the criteria that the family are looking for. Just mind the poopy. The next step is to get a closer look. Now, they're all a little bitey, don't worry. They're just It's just their way of saying hello. They all okay. seem really sociable. They do. I'm looking for a puppy that is sociable, a puppy that wants to interact, not just with the adults, but with the kids especially. I mean, I would say any of these puppies are lovely. <laughs> After a few more minutes of play, two puppies seem particularly responsive to the family. The Humane Society has dubbed them as Snowboard and Whistler. Oh, that one's a Whistler. She's <laughs> calmer than the rest, very sociable. Let's have a look at Snowboard. Hi. My favorite puppy is Snowboard because he's really cool. She's not wiggling too much trying to get away from me. Whistler's game, she's wanting to really interact. She's a bit softer mouth. Snowboard's very pretty, but I think she bites a little harder. So who are you going to pick? Whistler. 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 Here she is, then. Come on, Daddy. Take Hello, pretty girl. Yeah. Hello, pretty girl. When we picked Whistler. Jack was upset initially, but I think he's come around. Whistler gave him a couple of big licks on the side of the face, and uh, that's kind of won him over. With the paperwork signed, it's time to introduce the puppy to her new home and carry out one of the most important tasks okay. of puppy ownership. We've got to really fix a name within the first few days of Puppy being here. So Puppy's going to know what her name is. Have you guys thought of a name? Lollipop. Lollipop? I love it. So, Providing okay. Lollipop with a few safe and comfortable spaces so, is the next priority. This is the family area. It's great if Puppy cannot be isolated and be with you. First, she creates a temporary pen in the living room so Lollipop can be close to the family during the day. Then, Victoria prepares a more permanent space in the laundry room. I've set up a crate here. This is amazing. I want to train her that she eliminates just on these pads. When house training a puppy, if you have a yard, you can right away take puppy out on a leash to one area. In colder environments with a very young puppy, it's best to paper train indoors. I like to cover the whole area with pads, and then every couple of days, I remove one. OK. And then every couple of days, I remove another, so that there's only one or two pads left. So then she knows that she has to go over to her pad to do her toilet. Essentially, There's just one last essential element to make the room complete. Put up a baby gate. Puppies need to have you around. She needs to be in here, but not locked away. Okay. And that's going to cause her less stress. With the safe room prepared, it's time for some puppy playtime. Should we put her down? There you go. But already, the kids have missed an important step. 
Look what she's doing. Told you. There you go. <laughs> right. So let's put all of this stuff up here, okay? Let's put it up on the table. While the family finishes their cleanup, Lollipop makes another kind of mess. Oh, 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 oh. She just peed. Just a little bit. I knew that Lollipop would need to finish her elimination, and I wanted her to finish it in the safe room. There you go. There you go. Oh, she's so hungry. We can't take her back upstairs because this is the time she's likely to eliminate. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave her here now. I'm going to put the gate up and we'll give her some time and space, OK? OK. okay Let's guys. do that, guys. Victoria has briefed the family on the basics. The rest is now up to them. I just have to tell you that, yes, you now have your fourth child. <laughs> Just what we always wanted. Just what you always wanted. Your biggest thing to tackle is going to be the potty training, and I would say good luck. Okay. Start the house training process, I would say, in about a week's time, when it gets warmer. But until then, just use all the pads. I will see you very soon. Thank nice. you so much for all your help. Thanks, Victoria. Bye. Great to meet you guys. Bye. Bye. The hard work starts now. Owning a puppy is a very rewarding experience, but it takes a lot of time a lot of effort. Coming up, the families are on their own to deal with their precocious pups. Hey, if you don't have an eye on her, then there's going to be trouble. Oh, my God! Ooh. Victoria has helped two families get to grips with two different puppy hey. challenges. Don't care how much she fights. For the next few days, they'll both continue training alone, and the Thelans are already discovering just what a handful their new puppy will be. I think the hardest thing for us since Victoria's been gone is the neediness. You can't leave her alone for a second, and so really, if you don't have an eye on her, then there's going to be trouble. <laughs> Lollipop barks a lot during mealtime. She was just barking and barking at the breakfast table, so finally I just went over, I picked her up, and just brought her to the table. Aw, she loves you. Across town, Elise and John are just now realizing the level of commitment needed to raise a puppy right. I've definitely been doing more things with Raven than I have in the past. Elise has made sure that I take Raven out every time that the schedule says I should. It really feels good to feel as though I have a partner there to share some of the burden with Raven's needs. And I think that we're well on the way to having Raven potty trained. When Raven is inside the house, she's enjoying her new spacious accommodations and will even go into her crate on command. Crate. Good girl. Good girl, Raven. Later in the week, Victoria checks in. I'm looking forward to seeing how both families are getting along with their puppies. The Thielens kids are making an effort to help their parents with some of the less appealing puppy chores. She took a wee-wee. Why did she take a wee-wee? Lollipop pees, like, every two seconds. Pick it up, throw it in the garbage, put a new one down. Get a new one, or I will. Good teamwork, kids. I know the pee pads are gross, but you're all pitching in. With a newly cleaned pen, Lollipop is eager to play. But she's a little more rambunctious than the kids are expecting. No, no. That, that's not a bunny. That, that's not a bunny. <laughs> This isn't good. Allowing a dog to mouth now will create horrible habits that are hard to break. Those mouthing habits are all too familiar for Elise and John. Raven! Raven! Raven, come here. Good girl, sit. And they're practicing Victoria's techniques for eliminating those habits. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> Go ahead. Go, Raven. Good. It's important to let her off the leash after a bit so that she associates the leash with good things. Raven! Raven! I practiced maybe five or six times getting Raven on and off the leash, and she didn't get too aggressive, which made me really happy. Let's go. Back at home, Elise and John have invited a friend over. Hey. Hey, but when I usually come over to Lisa and John's house, Raven's always very prominent. She's trying to bite everybody, basically. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and we're... Ah, down. 
Raven. Sweet. Let's go. Let's go. The minute Raven jumped up on Walter, I pulled Raven off and told her down. I took her off to the side and waited for her to calm down before I reintroduced her to Walter. Perfect, Elise. By removing Raven when she jumps up, shows her that there are negative consequences to that behavior. Hot. Uh, OK. Raven. I'm wet. <laughs> Sit. Good girl. It took a couple of times of removing Raven and making sure that she calmed down before we reintroduced her to Walter. But after maybe four or five times, she was able to just sit down and not try to bite or mouth him. Good girl. Yay. Well, I almost don't know how to react to that. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely surprised at how calm Raven was. And it lets me know that I can bring people over now. I'm so proud right now. At the end of the visit, Raven is just laying on the ground, almost closing her eyes. It's almost like she's tired. You, I've never seen Raven tired before. Look at that. It's nice to see Raven lying so calmly on the floor. What a difference her behavior is to when I was first there. Well done. It looks like Elise and John and the Thelans have made good progress with the puppies, but there's still a lot more work to be done. I want to meet up with everyone and see if we can take this training to the next level. Coming up, Victoria gathers both families together and reveals the secret to raising a well-mannered pup. This is really your foundation and is going to set your dog up for success. Victoria is on her way to follow up with both families and show them the single most important step in raising a puppy right. There's still work to be done with both puppies, so I wanted to bring both the families to a dog training facility where the puppies each get a little bit of socialization and a class. First to arrive are the Thelans and their pup, Lollipop. Hey, guys. <gasps> How's she doing? She's great. She's lively. The time that is most crucial that the dog gets experiences of different environments, situations, and people and other dogs is between eight and 16 weeks old. As Lollipop is 12 weeks old, she's able to come to a place like this. So that's why I've got you here today. Great. Okay. Puppy socialization has to be done very sensitively because you don't want to give a pup a bad experience. So let's put little one down on the ground now. The leash off? Yes, take the leash off and allow her to explore. There you go. Straight away, Lollipop finds herself a new chew toy. I don't want her to do that. So when she does that, I want you to clap your hands and walk away from her, OK? Remember, the only time she can keep playing with you is if she keeps her mouth closed. And you have to start it from now, because if you don't, you're going to have an adult dog that nips and bites your clothes with very big teeth, and you don't want that. After Lollipop has a few moments to explore, Victoria brings in another puppy. Lolly. Lolly, who is it? OK, now you can let her off the leash. I had another puppy brought in, a Shih Tzu, called Dolly. Lolly, look. Oh, no. She says, I'm not too sure. And Dolly and Lolly got on very well. This is the first time she's ever met another puppy that wasn't one of her siblings. And the way she deals with it's very important, and we mustn't interrupt. Now she's saying, oh, you're kind of cool. Can you play? <laughs> They're having a great time. Look at that. <laughs> She's coping well. It is really important that the Thelans continue with socialization because it's the most important thing they can do with their dog. So I think a one-on-one -on -one with other pups is going to be a really good thing. Lollipop is showing promising social skills, but Victoria also wants her to witness some older pups in action. To do that, she'll introduce Lollipop to another one of her puppy students. Thelans, I want you to meet Elise and John and their dog, Raven. These are the Thelan family. John and Elise have had their puppy now for quite a while. And the Thelans have had their puppy for precisely, hmm, what is it, four days? Five days. Five days. <laughs> I'm going to do a little puppy class with Raven. And um, because Lollipop is too young for this, I'll ask you guys if you could go. I've set up some chairs for you. If you guys could go and sit down there and watch. This is what you are going to be doing with her when she gets a little older. Great. Okay. Ready? okay? All right. My goal with Raven is to get her accustomed to being around other dogs, to focus on her owner, 
and to get accustomed to being communicated with and to go through cues when there are other dogs present. This is particularly important for Raven, since her early months were spent mostly in isolation. I want to do something very simple. Move your dogs around just in a little bit of a circle and then ask them to sit for you. Victoria takes the puppies and their nice. owners through a series of basic commands. Good girl. I think this is a real eye-opening experience for us today, and this kind of uh, puppy training or dog school is something I really have no familiarity with uh, whatsoever. Um, so it's good to see it in action. So now, let's just do a focus cue where you're going to put your food in front of your dog's nose, lift it up to your eyes, and just say, watch me. This teaches the puppies to stay calm and focused in a new environment. I think Raven did very well, and I'm really looking forward to enrolling her in other classes and having a good dog. Giving your dog the experiences like this around other dogs is really your foundation and is going to set your dog up for success. OK, so well done. I just have to say it's been a real pleasure working with both of you. I wish you lots of luck with your puppies and their onward journey. Victoria has shown us that pretty much the things that we were doing were wrong, and she's put us on the right way that we can continue to progress with Raven. These puppies could not be luckier to be with people like you. Lots of love to you guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. It's not easy raising a puppy. It's a lot of time, a lot of dedication. You need to be patient, you need to be committed. And if you put in the work at an early stage, you are going to be rewarded with a dog that is healthy and happy and confident. The training's been going pretty well. It's slow, but it's we're moving along. The kids are being really respectful of a new puppy. Um, they love to play with her, and they love to run around and have lollipop chase them. The pee pads are a fabulous idea. We started out with about a dozen of them all over the floor, and little by little, we've pulled each pee pad away, just like Victoria said. And honestly, we're down to about one pee pad in every room in the house. We found some really good playmates for Lollipop because there's a lot of dogs around the neighborhood. I feel a lot more confident that we're doing the right things for Lollipop and getting her what she needs. Since the training, Raven is a lot calmer. She's not as mouthy. She comes to us for affection without jumping up uh, more often. Stay. She's starting to listen a lot more. Great. Oh, that's a good Raven. Since I've become a little bit more involved with Raven's everyday life, it's no longer a chore having to do things with Raven and help her out. I pretty much enjoy it. Raven, come here. I don't have any worries about um, getting Raven to come back to me. Good girl, Raven. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.